The Angry Marks Podcast Network is brought to you by WrestleWork, a social network to connect, create, and share everything about pro wrestling. Check it out today at WrestleWork.com. You're listening to the Angry Marks Podcast Network. A battle of franchises will take place as the ICW champion franchise Troy Miller will be taking on his challenger, the franchise Shane Douglas. Shane, what made you decide after two years you wanted to come back and uh, do some battle with your old nemesis? Well, you know, for me, it's it's uh, it's a, a bit of disrespect. You know, some people look at things and say homage and paying uh, respect to somebody. And uh, to me, the, the business that I came into <clears throat> a long time ago, uh, a lot longer than I care to admit to, but uh, over that time, it's also called experience. Uh, the guys that I broke into the business with uh, wouldn't have, how do I say it, wouldn't have liked very much somebody just uh, be coming in and calling myself, uh, you know, uh, Ravishing Shane Douglas. I don't think Rick Rude would have taken uh, uh, much kindness to uh, uh, Dirty Shane Douglas. I don't think Dirty Dick Slater would have taken much, uh, uh, re- seen that as a sign of respect as, uh, without asking first. Uh, look, there's no question about it. This kid's a good wrestler. Um, but I'm the guy that wrote the book and, and the page in the book on using uh, stars that, that preceded me uh, as stepping stones. And I, I don't very much think that I'm going to be stepping into the same thing and allowing somebody to do the same thing using my playbook. Well, definitely Mr. Miller has has gone on from being top rope Troy Miller to claiming the franchise tag. Shane, what are you going to do to this man in a steel cage? Because this is, this is going to be a heck of a fight. I, I don't remember Mr. Miller being in a steel cage before, and I know you have. Well, absolutely. First of all, it's no fun place to be. Uh, secondly, it, it plays into favor for me uh, at my age uh, that it's not going to be a lot of running around the building and, and chasing a guy. When you're locked inside of four sides of steel, it, it, it's a very confining space, uh, 18 by 18, 20 by 20, depending on the ring size. Uh, sounds like pretty big, but when you get inside there and you've got somebody else trying to get their hands on you, uh, it, it seems like you're in a closet. And, uh, you know, it's it, the fact that he hasn't had much experience in steel cages, and I have, uh, it certainly plays in the favor for me. Uh, but I'm not going to go in there and take this kid lightly. I'm not going to step into the ring, especially inside of a steel cage, uh, with somebody much younger and somebody much faster, uh, uh, and, and expect that it's going to be a cakewalk. You know, for me, it's going to be there come time, and uh, if I can pull a page out of the Dean Douglas past to take this kid and teach him a few lessons in, inside the square circle, so that down the road maybe he can teach it to somebody else if he, if he you know, if he ends up having the kind of career that, that the real franchise has had. Maybe the old Dean Douglas might be able to take him to school. What do you think? <laughs> well, it's somebody you know, that over the years I've I've stayed. Uh, you know, the Dean is, is some is something in my career that I've, it's not a bright shining star in my career, but I stand behind the original intent of the character. You know, it, it was uh, the way it was pitched to me, and the way that it was uh, uh, sent to me was that it would be used, utilized to. Tighten up the guys up there, all the guys. We're making very minor, simple, basic, elementary mistakes. Vince thought that by taking a character, the way, again, the way it was pissed to me was by taking a character with a fairly accomplished wrestler at that time and pointing it out that the guys would see that, that what I was saying was correct and tighten their work up. Instead, certain guys that lost their smile, I decided that they, they weren't going to like, like that too much. And, uh, so <laughs> it's, but that takes us into a whole different storyline. <laughs> well, what was your thoughts, I guess, Shane, when you found out you were going to win the IC belt but only hold it for a matter of seconds? Well, that, the, the winning and losing part of it, uh, to me, is irrelevant. You know, it, it, right. it, it is. But when Shawn Michaels, after running his mouth for weeks while I was in Germany, that he was going to do this to me in the, in the ring and he was going to embarrass me and he was going to do that to me in the ring, to then walk out and forfeit the title... When, truth be known, and, and I'm sure there's stories out there, it's been out there a million times I've heard it uh, spoken, uh, Sean wasn't injured. Uh, he had been injured some time before that, and it wasn't by a, a group of 10 or 12 or however many people, 25, whatever the number of Vince and those guys put out. It was one guy that kicked Sean's ass because he was drunk and belligerent and saying nasty, rude things to this guy's girlfriend, wife, whoever he was there with. 
Uh, that's been verified to be one of the two people that were there in the car, David Boy Smith and Sean Waltman. That it was one guy that dragged it through the window and beat the hell out of him. Uh, he, uh, you know, and Vince wisely had to do something to cover it up. One of his top guys got beat up by one guy. It's not too good for one of your champions uh, to be right. uh, to get his ass kicked by a guy. And so they put the story out there. But that was, uh, I think, far, I think longer than a month before that match. And the, the whole reason that the match got changed was Sean had gone back. You see, David Boy Smith and I had been friends for years in the business, and David would always like to stir a, a good pot. And when I got back from Germany, David Boy had called me and told me that Sean had been running his mouth the entire time that we were gone and saying things like he was going to embarrass me in the ring and he was going to do this and that to me and all this kind of stuff in the ring. And I said to Davey, knowing full well that Davey would take it back, you know, I, I said, well, if, if he tries, I'll stretch his ass on national television. And uh, two days later, I get a call from J.J. Dillon saying that Vince didn't meet me. And they wanted us, originally we were scheduled to fly in Tuesday before the pay-per-view because Vince wanted to go over this very important finish, which Vince had already told me was going to be a repeat of the Ultimate Warrior recruit angle. Beat him for the Intercontinental Belt at WrestleMania. He beat me with Jim Music for the world title. And uh, when J.J. called to tell me that, that the uh, finish had been changed, that, that I wasn't needed in, uh, wouldn't give me an explanation other than to say that Sean had a relapse of his concussion. Now, remember, I was accepted to medical school. So I know that you don't have a relapse of concussion if you're not hitting the head again, if you don't uh, have another follow-up injury, bump your head, bang your head, whatever. And I, I, so I asked him, you know, how did Sean hit his head again? So he did, he said a relapse of the concussion. And so it was telling me everything I needed to know. Sean had run his mouth, and I responded. And so Sean decided to take the easy way out. And along the way somewhere, he lost his smile. <laughs> I always say that because <laughs> to me, that is, that's just the biggest pushwad response from a man that I've ever heard. You know, it's, yeah, I lost my smile. Guys, I can't talk, and I, like, I'm looking for my smile. <laughs> Tremendous. But that was the, 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 the only thing I had consternation about the whole angle was uh, with that, you know, four, and how many times since you, you guys have been watching wrestling for your entire lives like I have, how many times have you heard a champion say over my dead body, blood, sweat, and tears, I, you'll have to kill me to take this belt from me. Or unless I get my right. head, I'll stand it to you. It, it, it's <laughs> just the most farcical thing that you've ever, ever heard of, especially in the National Football League, supposedly, of our sport. To have your major top star go out and do that, to me, it killed him. It killed the belt. It, 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 to me, the belt meant nothing. So losing it a few seconds later, Sean had just flushed it down the toilet. So it meant nothing. If, if you know, to me, even with the concussion, uh, you go out and you perform. You know, I was just talking to uh, the guy that I'm going some business with, and I was telling him back when I was a kid, a uh, concussion was considered a bruise. You just keep going. You know, it's now we know my right. better day. But at that time frame, to sit there and say, I, I would be embarrassed, put it this way, I would have been embarrassed to no end to call my boss and say, I've got a concussion and I really can't perform on this great big pay-per-view for this very important angle. I can't do it. Uh, you know, I, I, I would feel like a, like, a, like an idiot. So to me, it, he'd already flushed the belt, and the belt meant nothing. So losing it a few seconds later uh, was irrelevant. It was just, a, just another part of the storyline in the cartoon landed as WWE. This is the Undisputed Wrestling Show. We have the privilege of speaking to the franchise, Shane Douglas, this evening. Shane, I'm an old fart. I'm right there with you, buddy. I am uh, I remember your days back in the old uh, UWF. Uh, when you did get your call to WCW, and they finally decided to push that angle with the uh, skateboards and uh, John, Lor uh, John Laurinaitis and uh, all that and make you maybe face, how, I mean, what was your reaction to that? Was that something you thought could take off, or did you really just, in the back of your mind, know this was going to flop? No. no I, to, to be honest with you, the original concept with that would have worked. Uh, the skateboards and the name Dynamic Dudes came after the concept was conceived and actually portrayed. If you pull up on YouTube, uh, uh, Music City Showdown from Nashville, uh, Johnny and I wrestled the opening match with the uh, Samoan SWAT team. Uh, with Paul Heyman managing them, uh, ironically. Right. And mm -hmm. we were Johnny and Shane, the next generation, or Johnny and Shane, the new generation. It was next to new generation. And uh, the very next day, Eddie Gilbert got into the uh, hotel van to go to the airport, and he said, well, did you hear your new name yet? And now I had known Eddie for some, some time, and Eddie had a real wry sense of humor. 
And so I thought, okay, he's ribbon. I'll, I'll bite. I said, okay, no, I've heard it right. What, what's her new name? And he said, uh, uh, Jim Hurd came up with the name Dynamic Dudes. And I started laughing my ass off thinking, that's the funniest thing I've ever heard. It's a great rib. And, uh, and he turned around and he had this real serious deadpan look on his face. And I stopped laughing immediately because I knew I'd, I had known Eddie long enough to know that he was being serious. And I said, please tell me you're ribbing. And he said, just shook his head no. Well, we were in Bristol, Tennessee that night, and Rick Flair, who was the chairman of the committee at that time, the booking committee, I went up and saw Rick, and I said, uh, Rick, you've got to do something about this name. This is ridiculous. It's, you know, Before I even finished the sentence, he put his hand and said, there's nothing I can do. And now, free frame there for a second. He's Rick Flair. He's the biggest name in, in, in that company, the, the biggest or one of the biggest names in the history of our business. I'm pretty certain that if he had called Jim Hurd and said, Jim, it's a bad idea, Let's go with something else for these guys. That it probably would have gotten done. And uh, but that was, you know, it's all those are all parts inherent of what was wrong with WCW from the beginning, from the time it changed from NWA, and only because Ted Turner was such a big wrestling fan that it stuck around that long. As soon as the corporate people got their hands on it, and it wasn't a wise move. I'm not suggesting that that was the case. But as soon as the corporate people got their hands on it, they saw the buffoonery of it and, and cut it loose. You know, it was uh, for what they were paying these guys, uh, some of the millions of dollars, and for the, the utter lack of respect they were getting back for most of them. Uh, that doesn't work in corporate America. You know, very few wrestlers understand how the real world works. Uh, you know, in a corporation, an entity like Time Warner, if somebody's going to pay you $6 million a year, then they expect certain things back not just to show a match now and then or, you know, your best effort every so often. They expect a shitload from you. And those guys simply weren't going and giving it to them. And they thought that they were better than the company, and they found out in the end that wasn't the case. 